other property um, businesses as well. And what we wanted to do really is just kind of share some of the thinking that we have behind um, how to, you know, best practice in the industry um, and how um, our tech might be able to help as well. As so Ed, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, hi guys. Um, so I'm a, um, a fractional CMO, so kind of a chief marketing officer that works for different companies um, uh, to help them improve their marketing and growth um, capabilities. Uh, I've got experience in um, financial services, so I work with Experian and work with REC, uh, and now work a lot with property companies um, to, uh, to help them to improve their marketing and growth. Working with the great guys here at, at Brickflow at the moment, um, and I think there's, you know, there's a massive opportunity here in terms of how we use technology to uh, engage with um, each stage of the marketing funnel. And I think that's really applicable to, uh, to brokers and how they go about engaging with their clients. So, yeah, so the, the kind of process that we'll go through here, if we're right to kick off in. Yep. Um, is what I want to do is kind of take you through a little bit of a kind of practical framework that I, I've always used with my clients. I think it'd be really useful for, for you guys in terms of kind of understanding each step of the marketing and sales funnel. Then what we'll do is we'll, uh, Ian will be able to give you real practical examples about how Brickflow can help every stage in that funnel and how the technology can be um, embedded and give you a better chance of generating business. Um, so the, the best funnel I've used and I've seen a lot is what's called race or as in winning the race. So it's developed by a company called Smart Insights, and I've done a lot of work with them. Um, it's a nice, simple, you know, step-by-step -step stage in terms of each uh, area of engagement with customers, but it also has a lot of emphasis on the kind of final stages. So there's converting leads rather than just generating a lot of leads or traffic, and then how you engage with those customers and you build up the lifetime value of those customers. Um, and how that enables you to generate far more referrals, um, which is so powerful and a lot easier to convert. So we'll go through each stage there. Um, feel free to chip in questions in the chat. We'll leave some questions at the end as well to be able to an answer. And hopefully we'll give you some real kind of practical examples and bring it to life with the brick flow elements we've got in here as well. Oh. So the first stage here is planning, but I always you know, really like to think that every stage you're thinking about needs to involve the customer, right? The knowing your developers and their objectives for each scheme they're planning or what they've got in their pipeline is so important. And you know, I use this example in terms of you know, classic customer is king rather than the prince of darkness. But I think the whole concept of just demographics or just uh, firmographics as well, is sometimes a little bit flawed. So you can see a potential client is exactly the same way when actually one would be your ideal customer and one wouldn't be right for what you offer in terms of the finance you provide or the type that you offer for that particular developer. So a great framework to consider and potentially look up is the jobs to be done framework. And that really considers how a developer is going through each stage of their journey where they are in it and how they're going to hire your particular brokerage, hire your service to get the best results for them at that particular time as well. So as we go through this, think about that ideal customer and then think about your anti-ideal customer as in the one that's not right for you and the way that you approach your positioning, your messaging and each of the channels that you're using. So the first stage that we're going to go through is reach and Look, there's a number of, you know, there's a hundred channels that you could potentially consider. So we don't have time to go through each of them here. But what I'd like you guys to think about is the concept of outbound marketing and inbound marketing. And that's really to do with pushing out messages to customers or potential prospects or pulling them in with uh, engaging content and driving them in to generate leads in that way. So classic types would be for outbound would be PPC, direct mail, call calling, it's applicable to sales as well as to marketing. Um, the benefits of it, I always call it like being able to turn a, a tap on and off. So you can start immediately and you get those quicker results, but it often is more costly. You're going to spend um, and you're not going to get an ongoing relationship with those customers. So there's potentially less engagement and therefore less credibility. 
One tip for you guys that really consider is that you need to know what returns you're getting from each of your channels when you're spending in that way and have a really clear view of when you're spending what returns you're getting. We're spending X, you're getting Y. Classic view is people don't understand what's happening and those cost per acquisitions really inflate. The other part is inbound marketing. So classic search engine marketing, referrals, partnerships, organic social, and definitely not just for your business, but your individual brand as well. It can be a lot more cost effective. There's a lot more time that needs to go into it, but I would consider it to be evergreen. So the more time you put into it, the more it builds over time. And you often get that higher engagement as well. Now, uh, the challenge is it does take longer to get those results. So you have less control of turning the tap on and off. So I would say start early and the more you engage and the more content you put out there, it more will compound over time. Biggest thing uh, is understanding overall between those, these channels, how they interact together and how they consider against your customer as well. So Ian, it'd be great if, to, if we can chat how Brickflow has a good impact in terms of this reach level as well. Um, yeah, so the there was a couple of things that we wanted to sort of talk about here is, is that you, it doesn't really matter where you are as a business. There's obviously a way that you can look to attract people um, to your business and uh, to you. So um, you've got at the sort of higher end of the market. So Clifton, for example, they have our enterprise products. So that is the white label version of Brickflow, which they put into their website and allows customers to search. Um, and the benefit of that is obviously we will come on to this later sort of contact forms. Generally, people talk about them not being particularly great in terms of lead capture. Not many people use them. Whereas actually, if you're able to offer a benefit, which is someone being able to search the market there and then in your website, then that's a, you're something you're giving to them for free. They're much more willing to sort of give over their contact details for you to then nurture them through the, the lead funnel. So Clifton are a great example of someone that's obviously spent a lot of money on SEO in the past. And they are, if you look, they, they rank almost one and two on Google pretty much any term in, in our industry. Um, but what I think was missing for them was that that sort of enterprise piece or what we call our enterprise product, which is actually converting that web, web traffic into meaningful leads. Yep. And I think for a lot of people, that's that's really the, the missing gap is like, it's great having a presence either online, social media, wherever, saying contact me, but you're reliant on luck, right? You're reliant on that person saying, here's my email address, here's my phone number or picking up the phone and actually contacting you. And that really shouldn't be part of a business model is, is reliant on the other side to actually do the work. I think, you know, if you can, if you can use the, the white label version of Brickflow and, and put it strategically across multiple channels, you're going to get a much better return on your investment. Um, so the second example there is someone um, who's done this on um, social media. So, um, this is a, a post that they've they've done obviously their own graphics, but then in there is a is a link to their white label version of Brickflow, and again anyone can click on that and and um, and and the lead is created for that broker. And the third example there on the right hand side, um, as we look, is is Lordsons. So they're an estate agent who one of the enterprise customers has put uh, their link. Uh, into that into that website. So anybody that goes to Lordson's website now not only can search for loans when they're looking at commercial property, it's a great time to sort of do it, right? They're looking at a property on an estate agent's website. And at the same time, there's a link next to it saying search for finance now. There's there's a much better chance of that of that person clicking on that link because they're looking at the thing they want to buy at the same time. And again, that lead then converts through onto onto that broker's dashboard and the other thing um and that broker um i don't know if he's on actually is mark champ the one thing that he's sort of said massively um he's noticed is the brand recognition so his his link now is in four or five websites and even if people click on it and don't do the search he's found that actually the number of people that are calling the the uh, company has increased massively over the last few months and he couldn't quite put his finger on it initially and now he's kind of worked out that actually 
is pro it's probably to do with this is that you know four or five websites now and, th and think of it as in terms of like your reach if you get two thousand people on your website every month but then you can go and plug your technology into five other websites that also get two thousand um visitors to their website all of a sudden there's twelve thousand people that might see your brand rather than two thousand so it's very very simple like economics or mathematics of you know the further you reach and and the, the more sort of fingers in pies obviously the more opportunities you're going to get um this is this is something else that we we talk um to to brokers about using technology is what, what the thing every every consumer or every person that you speak to will have used search comparison right so whether it's uh, for uh, mortgages, uh, money supermarket, car insurance, credit cards, Skyscanner, theatre tickets, holidays, everything you can compare now, right? So this is not foreign technology to them. So one of, one of the simplest things you can do is obviously just email your database. We we use Loom internally, which we think is a great tool. If you haven't used it, um, download it, L-O-O-M, Loom. It allows you to video your screen and also then puts you in the corner of the screen talking uh, delivering commentary over the video it's a five minute video it allows you to deliver you can do 75 videos in the library and that is all free it doesn't cost you anything but the point is is you can record a video of you talking over your technology brickflow and you can send that to everyone in your database there is zero cost for that you can write a really nice email saying we've just invested in some new technology allows us to search the market in two minutes. You know, have you got any projects you want to look at at the moment? I can give you results, you know, instantly. And then there's a video of you perhaps doing a quick search or talking through the results page. That, I said, like I say, costs absolutely nothing. Loom is free um, and you will get results from that. The other thing I'd really advocate doing, and again, I know um, uh, speaking to Mark Champ about it was... Um, you know, any time you're going to speak to uh, an event, try and run run a demo of this on in on the big screen, right? He was at an event recently, um, and there was 200 people in the room, and he ran uh, a search on the screen. He called, got someone in the audience to call out numbers, ran a search on the screen, and at the end he said, who could see themselves using this technology? And every single person in the room put their hand up. Um, so that was 200 people from a 20 minute demonstration that potentially are customers of his now because he was he he got into the right space and he was able to eloquently uh, and visually um, describe the technology that he had and how it would benefit the lives of the audience. Um, so these are just some of the things. I, public speaking isn't everyone's cup of tea. I, I generally used to hate it. I'm getting slightly better at it. Or maybe not. You can judge. But but the point being is is that get out of your comfort zone, go to pin meetings, go to um, property investor network meetings, you know, go to some of these meetings and just say, look, can I can I do 20 minutes? Like I'll be up on screen and, and just do a demo, walk you walk them through Brickflow. Most people will be blown away by what you're showing them. So just go and do it. Uh, this this piece is really just in terms of your tech stack. So, you know, you've got all across the top there, all the different places that you could put the enterprise link. Um, it all comes through into your version of Brickflow. So on the dashboard, I think there's a slide later on which shows you what you get on the dashboard. So you get the phone number, you get the contact name and the email address of everyone that does a search. You get all the search parameters as well. Um, and then that is in your... In your um, uh, software package and then you can sync that with your crm if you want to and start delivering a uh, a cadence or nurturing of that contact until they're ready to um uh, ready to convert okay great so we've Sorry, yeah, gone through Belinda, kind of Belinda, can you can you can you mute the Belinda milton thank you no worries. Okay, so we've talked about how we're using it to build our uh, audience. We create our audience. 
obviously the next stage is how we generate leads. And like Ian's talked about a number of opportunities, but you can do that through the Brickfoot uh, platform. I think the what I'd recommend is just thinking about the purchase intent of the leads that you're generating and then how you nurture those, so how you deal with those different leads. Obviously, ideally, we'd like to have you know developers that have the, the best possible scheme that's ready to go, the best person to be able to lend to, but it's not always the case. So I think it's just a, a case of where they are within their journey and how you then reach out to them. So I always consider like top of the funnel or bottom of the funnel. So the top of the funnel, they're more kind of interested in content around what you do, then the best way is collecting an email address. Once you've collected that email address, we'll go on to how you can nurture that particular lead. Bottom of the funnel, you're collecting a more valuable lead. And that's where I think Brickflow can provide more of an engaging experience for the developer because they're putting in more details and they're getting value out of the back of it uh, from a lender comparison. But you're also capturing that lead. So you've got far more information as well. Uh, Ian's mentioned social media. So great in terms of building thought leadership, but you need to have a very clear app call to action in terms of what people can do next off the back of that and enabling developers to be able to use a technology to check what's the latest in terms of the lenders that are available is a good way of doing that. We'll go into an example in a moment. Uh, classic website, so website hygiene. You need to be able to kind of think about the speed. It influences where you rank for SEO, but also the kind of user experience. Think mobile first. You'd be so surprised what volume of people are accessing your site, mainly through mobile now rather than through desktop. And just a consideration of how people are interacting there. Um, and then just the structure and call to actions. I've seen so many websites where you just don't know what to do next. So old adage is don't make me think. Don't make your developers think. Give them a clear call to action in terms of what to do next. Uh, social proof is hugely important. So people just don't trust companies individually unless there's a level of social proof. Classic kind of Amazon style star ratings but also reviews, referrals, case studies is so powerful to give a developer a confidence to be able to go with you. Um, and then we talked about inbound marketing, but I mean, content is, is really a strong way of engaging and building leads. So giving out content that's relevant to your particular understanding around finance or even within if you're local in a particular area, local examples, um, collecting leads off the back of that and engaging in content in that way, I think is great. Um, and just tighten down your proposition as much as possible on your a website. Don't try and be for everyone. Just be, be really call out what the, the clear um, USP is, so unique selling point is, and what you offer there in terms of developers. Um, and you know, the last bit, if you can, and this is what kind of Brickflow offers, are these tools and calculators. So I'll call them more interactive elements to a website. Rather than just classic brochureware, this is what I am, this is what I do. If you can engage something, engage a user with something which is interactive, they are far more likely to convert. So I think, you know, all of you guys, I'm sure, have contact forms on your site, but how much does a, a search improve the level of lead generation from just filling out a contact form? So yeah, over to Ian again for these examples. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't asked. Clifton, what um, number of people used to come through their contact form? Um, but I know that in the last three months, they've had over 700 people go through their version of, of Brickflow and complete searches or give, give up contact details. Um, so I, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever filled out a contact form on a website other than a restaurant. Um, and that's probably the only one I would ever do um i don't want to give over my contact details to someone to maybe call me at a time that doesn't suit me um this i can go through uh, yes i'm giving up contact details but i'm getting something in return right i can search lenders there and then i can see where the market's pricing and you know if somebody does contact me then i can politely say no i'm okay at the moment or i can engage and uh and i can go go do the dance and until I'm ready to convert. But the the point being, and I think Ed sort of nailed it really, is, is that the interactivity, it, it, the more time people can spend on the website, your website, learning about you uh, and enjoying that experience, the more likely they are to engage with you. So it's to think about, you know, the minute you get on a call with a client that you haven't spoken to before, you're not going to go straight into 
um, you know, the deal, you're probably going to learn a bit about them, their motivations, things like that first. I think this is kind of the online version of that, right? Isn't it? You're you're understanding the types of deals they're looking at. Is it commercial? Is it residential? So then when you actually pick up the phone, to speak to them, or you send them that first email, you've got a much better qualified lead here because you understand the level that they're at. Are they likely to be a first time developer or are they like to be an old pro? Um, you know, if you've got somebody coming through this link, searching for a million pounds uh, on a, uh, HMO conversion, um, you're going to approach it very differently to somebody who perhaps comes through who's searched for a 90 million ho hotel loan. Um, so that that's really um, not only are you more likely to get more people engaged with it, but also the the level of information you're going to get is 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 much better, um, and the leads more qualified as a result. Um, Alex signed up for this. I'm not sure if he's on, um, but if you're on Alex, shout. But I, I think Alex is great. He, he, he's not um, an enterprise customer. I think he does have brick flow. But this to me is a really good example of somebody who's doing things right, right? He's got 31,000 followers on, on LinkedIn. But the call to action is contact me. Yeah. And again, as I said at the start, you're reliant on luck or the point at which somebody's ready to buy, they then go, oh, who's that guy on LinkedIn? What's his name? Oh, I can't remember. I'll just call my bank. Like th that to me is not a way to kind of try and build a business, right? He's done the hard work. He's got 31,000 followers. I imagine he spends hours every single week producing his LinkedIn contact uh, content. But then at the end of it is just contact me. Yeah. If you put like the enterprise link at the bottom. Imagine on every one of his posts, it says, remember, you can search for loans here right now. That would get, I guarantee he would get much better engagement and develop many more leads than he's currently doing with his current strategy. So uh, he hasn't said he's here, so maybe he's not on, but I do, I, I'm not trying to call him out here, but what I'm just trying to say is there's a missing piece in 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 what he's trying to do at the moment. And and we see it, you know, with a lot of the other brokers that we 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 speak to and that are using the software, they're doing great things, but the journey is not complete. Like they're doing one thing really well, but they're then not able, they're not getting the rewards that they deserve because they're just not thinking about the journey, perhaps from the developer side. Um, like I say, somebody on LinkedIn sees his content, thinks it's great, but they haven't got a loan to do at that moment in time. The way I think of it is if you speak to a developer most of them are probably going to be doing one or two loans a year some of them are only going to be doing one every two years so for them to be coming on linkedin seeing your content and on that exact day them needing a loan is very small chances right so if you can get them into your database give them value i.e., allow them to search the market on their own terms three o'clock in the morning 11 o'clock at night not having to call you then that is a much better experience and you can then nurture that lead until they are ready to convert. Um, Vast um, on the right hand side here. So Vast do have enterprise and, and these are the kind of posts that they run where they, they basically do GIFs, they do videos of, of how the software works and then they also put in the post, yeah, remember you can search loans here. And I mean, I've looked at the stats, they get they get traffic from that and I'm sure there's, and they're, but the number of followers they have is a fraction of what Alex Alex has, but I imagine their conversion is infinitely better. Okay, so next stage then. Got our audience, we're considering how we're con developing those leads as we talked about next stages, how we're converting them. And that's, as Ian kind of says, all about nurture. So my my tips here and i think you know working with all the sales teams as well as marketing teams it's that connection between the two and how you have ongoing um, relationships or conversations with them where you're adding value but you're also um, maintaining the momentum to get them to the sale but i think lead scoring is hugely powerful so not all leads have the same value spending the time on the leads that actually meet your um, your target market and your kind of ICP is usually important as well. And like we've talked about, considering the inter uh, purchase intent of those customers over time. Speed to lead contact is hugely important in my view as well. So, you know, and you, have, you have examples across clients where just leads are missed because they're not picked up or they're not picked up through uh, particular channels. 
So making sure that you have that first engagement as quickly as possible to find out about them, and then you can nurture them over time. The other thing as well is the classic kind of position of getting people to have a meeting or have that, that initial conversation or a series of conversations. Having uh, a series of engagements through email, through SMS, through reminders, and having those things locked in is uh, hugely important as well. And using technology to help you to do that, uh, where it reminds you what's happening within your CRM, um, I think is a uh, key as, uh, as well. Lead nurturing, so uh, what I'd call you know any level of marketing qualified lead into a sales qualified lead. That's understanding the situation, the particular um, scheme or where the developer is within that, that journey, um, and then continue to provide value with them over time. But top tip, I'd say, is always levels of personalization. Um, we know how many different communications we get over time, which are generalized. The more that you can have uh, personalized communication, the more you can use tools like you know Loom in terms of video, or by just really digging in down into the background of that particular uh, developer and where they are, means you're gonna have a far higher levels of engagement. So in a few examples here in terms of how Brickflow can help there. Um, yeah, so this is this is really uh, the dashboard. We've re redacted names. Um, so, you know, cause obviously it's, it's taken from the platform. So um, for confidentiality reasons, but I'd say you get, a tile with the name you get um they'll put a, they're encouraged to put a search name in so perhaps the name of the road um in the search data itself it's quite rich as you know if you've been through the journey it has location it has the property type it has the number of units has the number of flats number of houses um build cost gdv how long they think it's, i mean that's a really well qualified lead right if somebody's come through that journey they're they're actively um interested and and where i think where i see sort of um the the data coming through is if you've got somebody who's putting in million pound purchase price million pound build costs three million pound gdb that's probably someone just testing that technology works if you've got somebody who's actually coming through and doing you know 1.235 million purchase price 2.456 million uh build costs you know they're they're very precise. That to me is somebody who's 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 very much looking to buy, right? They are in that position where they've fully costed their appraisal and they're actually they're engaged, right? They're probably speaking to another broker. They might be speaking to a, to a bank, but if they're coming to you, they're obviously not happy with what they're they're being offered, right? So for me, that is a that's a hot buyer, right? That's a hot lead that you should be speaking to instantly, but. The, the point is, is that, you know, the information that's coming in, as we said at the start, you can connect it up to your CRM, you can have a call with them, um, you can then find out the, the buying intent, are they there, are they pre-planning, are they waiting on planning, you know, get all of that information from them, and then you can set a cadence of activity, um, and in terms of engagement, um, and how you engage, whether it be on the phone or via email, you can set that cadence on the back of that what they're doing on the screen, but also on the back of that first call. Uh, so yeah, and this is really high level, um, just, you know, in terms of what what we sort of look at in, in terms of um, internally is, is the time saving element of, of Brickflow, right? So, you know, pe people look at it and say, well, that, well, it's a bit of a cost. I don't, I don't know if I can afford it. Well, two things for me really yes it can generate business it's it's for me it's part of your marketing spend right people spend a thousand pounds a month on marketing and have no way of measuring what comes back in terms of like their roi and um, they might spend a thousand pounds a month they spend a lot less on here and you get actually measurable results right so you can measure exactly what comes through here as i said at the start you can spend loads of money on ppc but actually for me I think better way of doing it is being hyper personalized, very bespoke. You know the Loom videos, um, you know social media. I think, and that's all free, right? So buy buy the software and then just promote it through the free channels. Uh, but the what the other way we look at it in terms of not like if I invest this, it might create this in terms of um, return on money is actually the time saving, right? So you know a search on on the platform takes two minutes. Yeah, 
a realist if you if you're doing a good job for your client it probably would take you about 20 hours to do the same search manually over several weeks right because you'll go out you might do the blind copy thing to to 20 lenders which they hate um they you know most of them don't respond you then have to chase them someone's on holiday you know and and you don't get full market coverage you only speak to a handful that takes time right which takes you away from generating leads so the way i sort of think of it is that if each search saves you three or four days how much is that worth to you if you do 10 searches a month that that's three or four, three or four days times 10 so that's 30, 40 days of time that you're saving yourself by, by using the software. So not only is it a direct um, ROI in terms of if I if I put this here and I get this many searches, the, again, coming back to Mark Champ, I think what he said is is based on the, based on what he's seen so far. He thinks about 25 percent of the leads that he's had through his his um, uh, enterprise um, channel will convert at some point, yeah? I think he's had, in the last three months, I think he's had over 200 people come through that channel. So he thinks around 50 of them will convert. So how many people have had 50 leads come through their website on a contact form in, 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 in or oh, sorry, 250, of which they think 50-ish will convert? Probably not many, um, but the, the investment he's made is obviously in the enterprise product, but where he sees it is him and his team are actually out now a lot more visible in the marketplace because they're freeing up their time. They're getting out from behind their desk because they're not having to spend two, three days of work a week doing research. They're out meeting people. They're going to sites. They're seeing developers. They're building much better and stronger relationships, not only with their uh, developers, their borrowers, but also their, their introducers, right? They're a lot more present. They're a lot more. They're able to leverage their relationships a lot more strongly than they could previously. Um, in terms of the approval process, like it's one online form versus eighty-five different paper-based forms, or eighty-seven lenders on the platform now, uh, forty-two development, forty-five bridging. Um, head to terms. I think the quickest we got back was um, Corrado, who I can see is on the call. That was a seventeen-minute dip from Shawbrook. So Corrado put his um, deal on the platform. Not sure how long it took you, Corrado, but I mean, it can be done in sort of 20, 30 minutes, right? The application form. And within 17 minutes, he had a dip back from Mark Headley at Shawbrook. So it's a 45 minute end to end, maybe an hour end to end process. And he can clearly show his client that he searched the market, that is best practice. In the real world, I mean, realistically, that probably would have taken 20 hours over several weeks to do the same job. So Corrado now has 19 plus hours um, over several weeks to go and do to go and win new clients, right? Rather than spending the time trying to find the best deal. Um, and credit approval, obviously, super quick as well. Some lenders do it same day. Um, some will do it in one to two days of, of you saying, yep, yeah, that you're the lender we want to work with. Um, so, yeah, that was just highlighting really the time saving. Great. So last last phase then. So engaging so how are we going to increase the lifetime value of the customers hope for you know really great first experience and then how are we going to build on that so i think there's ongoing kind of customer success and this is what we try and do at brickflow as well but uh, enabling your developers to have the best experience will mean that they're going to come back to you over time so you know post finance or support how else you can help or other kind of engagement you can have them i think really is um, really powerful we mentioned kind of CRM, so ongoing tools where you're engaging with developers, potentially using external tools as well to check up in terms of how um, uh, additional developments or different kind of plans are going to approval, uh, engaging with them in that way. Uh, training, training and support. So the best relationships are where you're providing value add and where you're providing uh, useful and valuable information above and beyond. So I think that training and support is powerful as well. And then you know, partnerships and cross promotions. So I always call this a level of kind of rubber stamp. If you can have uh, ongoing uh, partnership with uh, somebody and there's referrals off the back of it, you're more likely to have a longer and ongoing relationship with that particular client. 
And are you really, you know, developers are going to have numerous sites. They're going to, um, you know, have situations that change over time and their business might change over time. The more you can flex to what they need in terms of what they're looking for in every scheme and have a wider level of lenders that you can offer that match those um, schemes they're looking at and potential developments they're looking at, the, the better as well. So, again, yeah, over Ian to you, but I think this is, you know, a great example of how, you know, you can take Brickflow with you. You can take Brickflow out on the screen and meet developers on site and show the, the latest um, deals, the latest lenders that they might not have considered as well. And that enables you really to have an ongoing relationship on site right, and away from your desk. But Ian, yeah, carry on. Yeah, I think this is a really powerful example. You know, if, you get, if a developer gets halfway through a scheme, um, and we took it. We keep talking about developers. Obviously, you, you have bridging and development finance on the platform. So, you know, perhaps it's broader than property developers, property professional, right? So, anyone that is doing any kind of upgrade works to to a property, be it refurb, auction purchase, etc. But yeah, when they're part way through a scheme, um, as as this one here, as this picture is on screen, absolutely, they're thinking of their next project, right? So. The, the lender, whoever it is, hopefully it's you've put them into it, um, is, is on site probably every other month or once a quarter. They're going to be in that guy's ear saying, we can do your next loan, we can do your next loan. If, if the software is freeing you up to spend more time to go and build stronger relationships, you can actually go and go onto site. You, you can take your tablet or your laptop with you. You can say, have you got anything in mind? Yeah, right, let's run a search now. And ultimately, the, the the search that you do is always going to improve on what they've been offered by, by an incumbent lender because the chances of the same lender being the best both times are, are, are very slim. Yeah. So, um, you know, most, most borrowers, I think, um, will go towards the existing lender just because it's easy, right? It's, it's painful to, to maybe try and switch. Whereas if you can demonstrate to them quite quickly and easily how how you can find a better solution, um, and if you've given them a really good experience first time around, then that trust has been built right to to execute with you for future deals. Um, so, I mean, the the thing, you know, we 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 speak to the market, and that's brokers, that's lenders, developers just to try and understand, you know, where our technology fits in. And the one thing when I speak to developers, I've got friends that are property developers as well. The one thing that always comes back is there is a proportion of the market that will not use brokers or don't want to use brokers or have been put off by using brokers. And if you ask them why, the three things that, that always come back are lack of knowledge. So they just don't feel that there's much value add. So what, what, what Ed has been talking about, um, the the lack of transparency, um, and also speed. You know how quickly you can come back, and and I think basically, you know, the software solves all of those problems. If you go to our website, if you go to brickflow.com, there is reams and reams and reams of information around development finance and bridging, and it's all free. It's all there for you to consume. You can learn like a lot on that. We, it's taken us years to put together that library. We're happy for you to white label it as well. Um, you can distribute it to your partners. You can speak to John about that in details beyond at the end. But the lack of transparency and speed is the thing that really comes back massively um, for from developers. The feedback we get is, is that, you know, speak to a broker, um, they take some details, they disappear for a week. I don't really get any further feedback. I get told they've done a search of the whole market and I get one option on an email um, with some bullet points. Um, and that is, that's meant to, for them, meant to be something that they go, oh, okay, yeah, you, I trust you to have spoken to every lender in the market um, and they, this is the best deal. And And based on every other facet of life, where they can do a search themselves or they can see transparently on screen with an advisor what the best option is, that 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 just doesn't wash, especially in this space where the difference between 
the right lender and any lender is going to be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds. And in some cases, millions of pounds right, in the bigger schemes in terms of deposit and interest costs, et cetera. So, and, and the speed element, you know, again, speaking to one of our customers the, the other week, he was saying that he'd won a deal just because he'd been able to turn it around so quickly. Client had spoken to an ex to their broker. Um, they had um, been t it'd been two or three days. They hadn't heard anything despite chasing, and the the broker using Brickflow was able to go back to them, send them a search within five minutes on the same phone call, and was able to get a decision in principle to them the same day. And they've won the deal. It's like twenty five. It's not massive, is but it's one percent of two and a half million. It's twenty five thousand pounds that they got just because they had our software. Um, and so, you know, th this is the world is changing, whether you like it or not. And and, you know, consumer attitudes are changing. Consumer behavior is changing and they expect this. They expect transparency and they expect speed. Um, and, you know, th this this gives them that. And we're, we're, we're certain of it. Cool. So we're coming up to time here. Um... I think the you know the last thing to say is obviously with um, you know brick firm brick firm enterprise what we want to try and do um, when we have people coming um, uh, on with us is just making sure that we are using brick flow effectively across each of those stages of the race framework and what we do offer is you know John Lever has just come on, um, on his, online there in terms of his, his, his smiling face. So he, he works directly within the marketing team for BrickFlow, but he also uh, has kind of packages where he'll have fortnightly calls with you to be able to help at each stage and make sure you're using BrickFlow to get the most out of it at each stage in your funnel. So uh, that's him there. So that, yeah, that's pretty much us at time at 45 minutes. Um, great. I hope uh, everyone got kind of value from the webinar. Obviously, any questions, please shout out. Um, I know John will share the slides with uh, the people that attended and the people that um, uh, couldn't make it on the call. But yeah, any questions, just uh, let us know and reach out to us. Ian, any last thoughts? Uh, no, I, I, I was going to say when you shared your first slide, um, you know, the obviously the demographics there being identical for Aussie and Prince Charles or King Charles now, isn't it? But um, the it's a really good point. You know, I think when you speak to developers, um, property professionals, they all come from, there's no university for it, right? They all come from like a, a huge mix of backgrounds. And so your ability to be able to um, tailor your pitch and, and learn a bit more about them before you get on the phone is really important, right? So, you know, if they've come through the, the the BrickFlow channel, you've got an email address, you can go and look them up. If it's a work email address, you can look them up on LinkedIn, right? Um, you can understand a bit more about them and their business. You know, the, the, we, we've we done some persona work in the past, I know, but, uh, you know, there tends to be people who've either come from a trade background and they love working with the broker community because they the thought of going to speak to a bank is just not attractive at all. It scares the shit out of them. You know, they want, they want somebody to be that barrier between them and, and the lender. Um, and so, you know, being able to educate them and, and give them content that allows them to understand the space before they engage, I think is really valuable, really valuable. And then you'll have at the other end of the spectrum, perhaps somebody who's worked in the city, perhaps has an accountancy background, really shit hot with their numbers really understands you know return on capital employed and how you know best to get uh well, what best metrics you should be using to measure performance on a site um and and they they like the tech because it enables them to really drill down onto onto where the the best deal is and you know your your ability to be able to cater for multiple um uh users is 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 really important and you can get a lot of that by having that better qualified information um so yeah i think your chances of success with someone that come through the um that channel are greater because you can learn a lot more about them before you get on the phone with them makes sense okay great well thanks a lot and I've um got two two quick questions i think oh no no, someone's saying thank you and John put in the, in the HubSpot link. <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you, guys. We're going to try and do uh, one of these a month. Um, value add.